हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू लेसन नंबर सिक्स वी आर स्टार्टिंग इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर एंड दिस इज द सिक्स वीडियो ऑफ दिस लेसन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन सो लेट मी रिवाइज यू सम ऑफ द टॉपिक्स सो वन इज दैट वी आर स्टडिंग अबाउट इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर इन दिस इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर वी स्टार्टेड बाई स्टडिंग अबाउट द मेजर क्रॉप इन आवर कंट्री एंड क्रॉपिंग पैटर्नस okay what are the factors affecting cropping patterns what is the evolution of cropping patterns in our country so various topics uh, till now we have studied we also saw about the intensity of cropping cropping intensity uh, in the previous video now we'll study about crop diversification okay so what is crop diversification crop diversification refers to shifting from traditional mono cropping systems example rice wheat in punjab to multiple cropping systems which may include horticulture pulses oil seeds millets fodder crops or medicinal plants so crop diversification basically means that instead of growing a single crop every year instead of mono cropping instead of same cropping patterns we will mix it up a little so basically growing rice along with horticulture along with pulses oil seeds millets fodder medicinal plants etc okay so that is crop diversification now it can be horizontal diversification that is increasing the crop varieties basically mixing rice with pulses okay or mixing rice with some horticultural or agroforestry like that or vertical meaning processing value addition so it can be uh, you know uh, vertical uh, diversification also so for example previously the farmer used to only produce rice now he is producing rice and also doing a little processing in some agro based industry and then selling it in the market so this is vertical diversification diversification of activities basically now what is the rationale behind crop diversification one is economic security obviously if you diversify your cropping patterns then economic security is achieved it because it reduces dependency on one or two major crops which may be vulnerable to market price fluctuations or yield failure because of climatic changes it enhances farm income also through cultivation of high value crops like vegetables fruits floriculture example farmers earning better returns from baby corn mushrooms aromatic plants compared to cereal so this has been statistically proven and it has been practically seen also then next benefit is ecological balance monoculture practices that is continuous paddy wheat rotation degrades soil health deplete ground water and increases pest and disease risks so this also happens uh, you know we have seen this that uh, there can be ecological damage if we continue to grow the same crop again and again use a lot of chemical fertilizers diversification promotes natural pest control improves soil fertility and conserves water stabilizes crop yield okay uh for example replacing paddy with pulses or legumes improves nitrogen content in the soil so this has also been practically seen then the next benefit of crop diversification is food and nutritional security diversified cropping ensures availability of proteins vitamins and micronutrients and just carbohydrates and not just carbohydrates okay and not just carbohydrates it boosts availability of coarse grains that is nutri cereals and vegetables aligning with nutrition sensitive agriculture goals okay so uh, uh, you know part of our food security scheme uh, is to you know achieve nutritional security so we have food security act uh, this paddy uh, you know this paddy procurement and this wheat procurement government procurement of various cereals is all part of basically your food security so in food security our ultimate goal is basically nutrition security so if we diversify our crops if we have policies whereby people are also incentivized to grow other crops other than wheat and paddy then our nutrition sensitive agriculture goals will also be achieved especially important post covid and in tackling india's double burden of malnutrition okay so for uh, tackling the burden of malnutrition in our country it is important now what is double burden of malnutrition double burden because we see that on one hand some people are undernourished okay and some people are obese okay some people are obese some people are overweight 
so they are also kind of malnourished so people who are overweight here undernourished meaning they are underweight or they you know they are uh, they are stunted meaning they have less height for their age or they are wasted meaning less weight for their height so these are the various forms of undernourishment and some people are obese overweight so that is also kind of uh, you know mal malnutrition so this is a double burden of malnutrition that we are facing and it can be solved through crop diversification if uh, you know we have sufficient policies to regulate uh, you know crop patterns cropping patterns now what are the current status and trends of cross crop diversification in our country traditional patterns still dominate we see that a large parts of indo gangetic plains continue rice wheat rotation not very successful crop diversification cash crops dominate in some regions example sugarcane in western up and maharashtra cotton in gujarat etc so they still dominate horticulture is gaining prominence so slowly slowly horticultural crops are gaining prominence we have a national horticulture mission also okay under which there are a lot of um, uh, incentives being given to the farmers to shift to horticultural crops india is world second largest producer of fruits and vegetables but also at the same time consumption demand is a lot so we need to have more and more production what are the trends the trends is that uh, you know in increase in area under horticulture and pulses especially in rain fed region it has been seen that in rain fed region people are moving towards horticulture and pulses government push through international year of millets 2023 has been in, has increased millet cultivation in karnataka telangana and maharashtra contract farming and exports have driven area under spices medicinal and aromatic crops however regional imbalance remains punjab and haryana remain cereal centric due to msp and procurement structure so this is a very very major problem there now what are the various constraints to crop diversification the first constraint being market demand and price volatility okay so people don't really trust uh, you know when government pushes um, uh, crop diversification because the uncertainty is there when it comes to demand and you know price um, price of those product when we talk about sugarcane when we talk about cotton when we talk about paddy or rice when we talk about wheat so there is a uh, you know guaranteed procurement guaranteed purchasers in the market government purchases it but when it comes to other crops there is no guaranteed returns so that's why uh, you know people uh, don't uh, you know readily trust in these uh, in these policies so market demand and price volatility is an important factor msp is guaranteed for rice and wheat and not for most other crops lack of assured procurement for pulses oil seeds or vegetables discourages diversification perishability of horticultural produce adds risks unless supply chains are robust now see it discourages diversification especially with uh, you know small and marginal farmers because they already have very very small patch of land very minimal income and if they also lose that so you know it will be difficult for them to survive so small and marginal farmers another reason why they don't get into diversification and most of our farmers are small and marginal farmers now small and marginal farmers meaning farmers who are owning less than 2 hectares of land in our country they are called small and marginal farmers less than 2 hectares means less than approximately 5 acres so 1 hectare is approximately 2.5 acres of land okay just try to remember this now what is subsidy uh, then then the next factor that uh, you know that creates a constraint for crop diversification is subsidy bias Uh, input subsidies like uh, you know urea subsidy electricity for tube wells canal irrigation they favor paddy and wheat it skews farmers choices and make diversification economically unviable policy incentives create subsidy trap that sustains unviable cropping patterns damaging both soil and fiscal health okay so this policy incentives like msp giving subsidies on seeds high yielding variety seeds so they are subsidized uh, okay then um, then urea dap these are also subsidized and they favor mostly uh, rice and wheat systems only example in punjab there is a near free electricity which promotes over irrigation of for paddy and making it artificially profitable okay so if if the electricity was not freely available uh, because of subsidy uh, then uh, in that case paddy would not have been so much profitable now it becomes it now uh, now these subsidies make them artificially profitable because farmers don't have to pay the electricity bills actually then land holding pattern and and risk aversion so uh, 86% of indian farmers 
uh, are small or marginal they have low uh, low risk taking ability okay so uh, as i have told you that most of our farmers are uh, small and marginal small and marginal meaning less than uh, 2 acres 2 hectares of land so 86% of our farmers are uh, are small and marginal and therefore therefore they have very low risk taking ability as i told you because already their uh, their income uh, source is very very limited and they don't want to take risk and diversification into horticulture or cash crops uh, requires capital technical know how and longer uh, gestation which small farmers often lack so they don't have capacity to to keep patience also uh, to to get into horticulture and other cash crops because they may be longer gestation longer gestation meaning they longer duration crops okay for example rice is say four month duration crop maybe sugar cane is um, you know some of the sugar cane is 12 months some of them is 18 month so they don't have capacity some of the horticultural crops like say for example if you are getting into plantation of mango plantation so it is a minimum five year period you will need for mango to uh, come to fruition so it is very very uh, difficult for small and marginal farmers to to wait for that long then there are infrastructure deficiencies also lack of cold chain uh, and storage perishables uh, need cold storage and refrigerated transport which is limited in rural india post harvest losses are also there which discourage uh, farmers from cultivating fruits and vegetables then there is inadequate food processing facilities also the lack of agro processing units limit value addition and marketability of diversified crops right example tomato in andhra pradesh or onion in maharashtra often faces glut due to inadequate processing capacity then the next one is poor extension services uh, and knowledge gaps farmers are often unaware of alternative cropping systems extension service meaning basically knowledge uh, systems where people where farmers can grow and learn about new things uh, where they can learn about new equipment machineries climatic suitability or market opportunities traditional mindsets and lack of training in integrated farming hold back diversification integrated farming is another important topic we'll study them uh, we'll study this topic in the upcoming videos uh, basically people are not aware about this uh, this new uh, this new methods or techniques public extension services uh, remain understaffed and poorly coordinated in most rural areas then the next constraint is climatic constraint agro ecological limitations some regions uh, example punjab and haryana have developed ecosystem dependence on particular crops right soils have become specialized that is high salinity due to paddy making immediate shifts difficult so already you have destroyed the soil and shifting it to some other crops makes it difficult and farmers feel that it is not profitable business erratic rainfall and climate risk also discourage farmers from experimenting as i have told you the major problem is that most of our farmers almost 86% of our farmers are small and marginal farmers and they do, they have very less risk taking ability that is the main problem then institutional and regulatory challenges monopoly of apmcs restrict further access to alternative buyers for new crops so apmc is basically agriculture produce marketing committees so these are the institutional mechanisms through which the farmers sell their produce to the institutional buyers uh, for example it may be government it may be private buyers also then contract farming laws are weak and poorly enforced in many states discouraging private investment in horticulture and non cereal crops so again contract farming laws very very important this farm laws amendment bills they had this particular uh, issue also in that address uh, but unfortunately those bills got reversed and um, uh, and now we are still debating on it but hopefully in future uh, these laws will be uh, will be uh, will be uh, you know properly enacted and people will adopt them uh then socio cultural preferences and consumption patterns food habits and public distribution system continue to emphasize on rice and wheat only our food security act as i have told you and millets pulses or other coarse grains have lesser social status 
and demand despite high nutrition so people still feel that these millets like ragi jowar bajra they have low social status and so there is no that much demand in the market yet so people still prefer rice wheat all these only so from demand side also uh, it is difficult for farmers to diversify their crops so this was about uh, crop diversification we'll continue in the next video thank you